guys, Isabel here and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, as you guys can tell, we're going to be doing a fun reaction video. So you guys, I was able to sneak into a WFAB call. Yes, a WFAB call. I'm so excited and I was able to record it, walk away, so I have not actually watched any of this yet. However, I'm literally so excited to dive into it. I know you guys are very curious about like what some of the WFAB girls are doing, what's been going on, what's happening because they are currently in the company A Genius. If you guys have not caught up in regards to the WFAB team that transferred from Monet to iGenius. I will have actually a little bit of a series pop up over here talking about the WFAB downfall. Do I still think that they're doing as good as before? Absolutely not. However, we're going to be diving into that today. So I do also want to give you guys a heads up. So <laughs> when I actually stepped away and record, I literally keep forgetting that the Zoom call actually has it to where it says this meeting is being recorded by the host. And I didn't like wait around. I just immediately had it recording and ready to go. So that's why there's a little bit of a fucking icon in the middle of the entire footage. Yeah, I know. However, still good. Still good. So we're going to be reacting to it today. So before we hop into today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell button down below so that way you'll be notified of every single video I post. And without further ado, let's get going. Let's go. Big day. Drop some ones in the chat if you're ready. Here we have to, what we have to say today. Drop some ones in the chat. Let's see who's ready for this. Who's ready? I need to see some ones, people. I need to see some ones. Okay, okay. There's my people. There's my people. So, okay. I see a few of you have cameras on. I like to see it. Sarah, Alexa, Summer, Carly. I love it. We need to see some more cameras on people. There's Zurich. Okay, okay. Let's go, people. Let's see that energy. I need to see some faces here. Okay, okay. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. All right, friends. So, we're going to get into it, okay? We're going to get into it right now, okay? So, today is the day friends okay so before i get into anything for those of you that don't know me my name is alicia armstrong my name's fierce right if you haven't seen me on my socials check me out because i'm aggressive i'm the in your face i'm the aggressive i'm the i don't give a fuck type of person excuse my language that's how i roll so like get on board okay because this is me right and i mean like with the name alicia armstrong like i just had to come into these things aggressive right like it just like my name just, my name just means like business okay that's how i felt my whole life right? So I digress. I digress. Okay. So moving on friends. So I am so excited for each and every one of you on this call today, because the information that we have to share literally has the ability to change not only your life, but the life of your future generations as well. If, okay. And this is a big, if you put in the work, those that put in the work will reap the rewards. A lot of people want overnight success, but they don't want the process, but it's in the process. I wanna talk about this because the statement of it will change your life and future generations life, I think is completely bullshit. They like to, act, this is a new argument that they're really starting to run with is the concept of generational wealth. And in order to create generational wealth, you need to have substantial money. That's a lot. That's insane. Like the people that have generational wealth are the ones that have multiple businesses that are performing insanely well, insane amounts of separate investments. There's a lot that goes into that. It is physically and statistically impossible to create generational wealth with an MLM. Even the people that are top 1%, even if they maybe, let's say, sure, invest right, it's very rare for that to even remotely happen. This is not something that can be passed on or provide something really well for an entire generation after you. Like that physically is not possible. And the fact that they're labeling iGenius, which has had lawsuits, name changes, everything, a possibility to change your generational wealth situation, statistically that's completely incorrect. Those that put in the work will reap the rewards. A lot of people want overnight success, but they don't want the process, but it's in the process process where you see who really deserves the reward. Okay. So first and foremost, right now, before we get into things, I just want to first point something out. Okay. Everybody here today, each and every one of you, all of us, we all have one thing in common. And that one thing in common is we are looking for something more out of life. Okay. You're on this call right now because you're looking for something more, right? I'm telling you, you know, we're all here for the same reason. We're all looking for something more. That's why you're on this call. Okay. So listen, whatever that something may be, I'm hopeful that the knowledge passed on today is enough for you to take the initiative and finally make that change that you've been needing to make 
in order to change your future. So this is another problem that I have with these opportunity calls. So the W5 girls have honestly had a major issue of claiming that their MLM, clearly any fucking MLM that they're a part of, can change your life no matter what. The problem that I have is, is they label the MLM as something that can fix every problem and situation. And something that we also know is, Let's say if you, I, I've never personally gone to an interview, but if you go to an interview for a job, most of the time they're not gonna sit there and tell you that this nine to five or any job for that matter is just gonna change your life and make absolutely everything better. better. But why is it that we see these individuals that are a part of the scammy ass company putting pressure on people trying to act as if that this literally can change people's lives in every aspect of their life. And that's something I would like to highlight when it comes to cults, for example, they always like to allude to the fact that whatever they could offer you can fix every problem in your life. So kind of, kind of ironic that this is what they're doing right now. Okay. And give yourself the more that you've been looking for. Okay. Cause your past self, if your past self was good enough to get you to where your dream life is, you'd already be there. Okay, so we all need to make some changes and step into a new version of ourselves because we're not gonna get anywhere with our old self. Genuinely don't like that. I don't like how that's worded at all. Saying like, oh, if your past life was, or past self was good enough, then you would already be there to begin with. Like you can have a past version of yourself that is still good and progressing. Like I just, this is the type of shit that they slip in is the like degrading derogatory shit that they throw into you, trying to almost like pressure you into believing that they know it all. And again, I personally feel like a lot of these top leaders are just word vomiting at this point because half the time they'll spread things like this and act like it's inspirational. And oh my God, look, we want you to step forward. We want you to move forward in your life, but like they're full of shit. So I always hate, I swear to God, they can never avoid it. How every meeting or every training or something, they always have some form of degrading, almost trying to be like, you are not doing good enough. But if you join us, if you join our team, then you're finally doing good enough. And it's just fucking weird. That person was going to be good enough. You'd have been there already. Okay. Myself included. I need to make lots of changes in order to step into my highest self, which I'm doing on a consistent basis. Okay. So yeah, say then your old self needed to grow, progress, and change. Not it wasn't good enough. That's still fucking rude. I wouldn't even want to say that to myself of, oh, I wasn't good enough before. That's why I wasn't there. No, I was still fucking growing and changing. This stuff should not be vocalized to anyone, period, no matter who you are. And this is definitely not a good way to start off an opportunity call. But you see how this is starting? It's already starting off with talking about how you need something and how your past self or where you're at right now is not good enough. But oh wait, they have an answer to absolutely everything here in just a second. If you're ready to take notes, which I suggest you do, because we all know that note takers are money makers, okay? So I want you all to write at the top of your page in big, bold letters, I am going to have a breakthrough today, okay? And I want you to hold on to that. Those are the first words spoken to your new self on the very first fucking day of the rest of your life, friends. That day starts today. Excuse my language. Okay, imagine joining an opportunity call about a business opportunity that you don't even know you're gonna join. And this person decides to absolutely yell at you, be like, today is the day you're gonna fucking change. Like, what a weirdo, relax. Just give them the information, the statistics, and let it go. Why are we yelling at people? Like, genuinely, in what world do you think that yelling at people and just going off and being fucking unhinged is going to get them to join your team? Their delivery is horrible, but two, it's also so sad because like, if this is what people are getting in like an opportunity call, for example, I can't even imagine how this person is with a training when her downline is not doing enough. Like, let's be honest here. I'm sure it's a nightmare. And honestly, anyone watching has access to things in regards to this, I please send it to me because I would love to see personal trainings that she has. I apologize again, okay? So with that being said, I just wanna tell you a little bit about myself before we get into this, okay? Why I started with this company, okay? So I've been in the network marketing industry myself for a few years now, okay? But my entrepreneurial journey started way, way, way before that, okay? I'm talking like a good 15 years ago when I was in my early 20s, okay? I'm really aging myself here, friends, but that's that's whatever. But yeah, so I had I've had major successes in my previous businesses. The first business I owned, I bought when I was 20 years old, friends. I was 20 years old and I bought a tanning salon, okay? So I learned how to make a lot of money at a young age. By the time I was in my mid 20s, I was already making six figures, okay? So I mean, that's great. You can make six figures, that's great, okay? But like in your 20s, you spend a lot of money too. And so I was really bad with it. As much as I made it, I spent it, okay? So this is where this business comes in, okay? Yes, I knew how to make money. 
But the most important thing that I lacked, okay, the most important thing when it comes to real wealth and financial stability, what to do with my money after I made it, okay? Okay, so whenever they share this type of perspective, this just screams being financially responsible because, okay, let's say she was making six figures and she's popping off and doing well. Good for you. That's something I always am excited about. When I hear people saying, I have my own small business. I started this. I did that. Like, that's good. That's literally what we want. We don't want you in an MLM or in a scammy predatory scheme. We want you actually doing things, creating things on your own, being a part of a franchise, things like that, that can be ethical and sustainable and not a fucking scam for that matter. But the problem that I have is now she's almost trying to label it as a negative thing that she had a small business. So, okay, she was in her 20s. She had a tanning salon. She's making a decent amount of money. And then she says, well, when you're young, you spend a lot of money. And, like, she's acting as if it's not sustainable. And my thought process is, okay, well, then don't fucking spend all your money. Save. You can invest. You can do all those things without what they're going to be getting to, which is iGenius, the financial assistance. You can be young, making good money, but also being responsible, like, if you want to get anywhere in life, you need to be financially responsible with the money that you have if, let's say, yeah, you're pumping out a lot of money like that. Like, I can't expect to grow financially in any way if the money that I have and if I'm making good money here and if I just spend it all on stupid shit. You know what I mean? Like, that makes no sense. So it sounds to me like she was young and was financially irresponsible, but she's using that as a way of saying, oh, well, you know, that wasn't good enough. That didn't work well. And so now she's tying this into, oh, well, I found iGenius and that taught me how to invest. It's just, this is the same old story that they like to share. iGenius was the way of teaching me how to make my money, make more money. And I'm like, okay, great. But you know what else is out there that exists that helps people do that same exact thing? YouTube channels, literally. There are so many YouTube channels out there that provide amazing investment advice, amazing stuff that can teach you how to invest money, how to actually make more money back, how to grow your financial portfolio, for example. You can do those things without spending a couple hundred for iGenius. No, like this is ridiculous. I was always taught by my parents, bless them, I love them to death, but my parents weren't the greatest with money friends. They weren't the greatest. And in turn, they unintentionally taught me how to stay in the broke mentality as well, okay? So listen, type in one of the chat if you've heard any of these phrases, because I'm about to drop a few of my parents' favorite phrases to me over the years, and I was like, eh, okay? Type in one in the chat if you've ever heard these. Money is the root of all evil, right? I'm sure we've heard it all before, exactly, right? How about this one? Money doesn't buy happiness. Okay, I beg to differ on that one, okay? And let me tell you why. Money pays for my food, it pays for the house that I have, it pays for the cars that I have, it pays for my life, so I, straight up, I rank money up there with oxygen. Why? Because as much as we don't want to admit it, you need money to survive. Bottom line, right? Exactly. I love how she is. she's acknowledging the fact that you need money to survive, which is, yeah, we know that's true. However, she is the same person pitching a company that literally is going to suck money out of your pocket every single month. And who's the target audience of this entire Zoom call? The target audience of the Zoom call is literally people that are needing something. She said that at the beginning. Why are you here? You need something. You need something. Why would you introduce something, though, that would require people and everyday people to spend a shit ton of money every month to do the program, not including financially investing money as they would be, quote unquote, teaching you? Like, this physically makes no fucking sense. She's contradicting herself, and it's really easy just to see how, like, She's playing with these things, trying to be like, oh, you need something. Well, I have something. But the something she has is literally going to drain your bank account. And one of my favorite lines that my parents used to say, money doesn't grow on trees. You're goddamn right. It grows in the markets, friends. Doesn't grow on trees. It grows in the markets. Okay. Yeah. I could have Googled that one, but babe, like that, that, no shit. What okay. So back to what I was saying. Okay. I began to realize that I wasn't truly going to get ahead in life until I started to learn how to build a future of real wealth. Okay. Not rich. There's a big difference between being wealthy and being rich. A big difference. One allows you to fly first class. The other allows you to own the fucking plane. Okay. I'm trying to own the plane. That's the energy I'm on. That's the type of shit I'm on. I don't need to fly first class. I want to own the damn plane. Okay. That comes with work, hard work. Don't get it twisted. This glamorous lifestyle, these perfectly little curated tiles that you see on Instagram, that's all cute. That's, that's just the, that's just the niceness that we want to show you, but it takes work to get there. Okay. So Type a one in the chat if you want to own the damn plane. Dear God, this is so embarrassing. Like, okay, I have goals. I love that. 
great, I love that. But why are we putting this mentality of, oh, if you want to do this, if you want to own the fucking plane, as she says, then I have the opportunity for you. In what world? Also, the weight that they have on being ridiculously rich is fucking stupid. I like I literally cannot wrap my head around the fact that that is all that they talk about and preach and post about and embody in a lifestyle. That's all they focus on and I'm just like blown away at the fact that they think that's like the only way to do well and be successful and live. And I just this might just be a personal perspective here. I'm not going to lie, but I personally kind of sit here with this argument and think like honest to god, even if I was loaded out of my ass, I don't want to buy a plane. Who gives a shit? Just do first class. Why would you want to pay for all that maintenance and having that? Like, what? What's the need? There's really not a need. You can have amazing experiences and not spend stupid money like that. You can, I don't know, do something with charities. You could do something for other people. Like, it's not all that. Like, I know I don't have a plane, but I'm just saying. The weight that people put on some of these materialistic things, especially these individuals to express how much money they're making, it just, it makes no sense to me. And it's just bullshit at the end of the day. Do you want to own the plane or do you want to fly first class? Because we're two different people then. Okay. So it's wrong to want to just fly first class as if that's a derogatory thing is flying first class. Oh my God. We are already, this is a dumpster fire. God. So I want to be able to build wealth, not just for myself, but for my future family as well. I want to retire my parents. I want to live life by my design without having to worry about the financial side of things. I don't want to be inconvenienced by money, friends. I want to just have it and go. Like if I want to pick up and go to Europe for a few weeks tomorrow, then that's what I'm going to do. If I want to be a snowboard, a snowbird, build a house in the Caribbean and take off every winter, that's what I'm going to do, okay? The future life that I see for myself and the future life that you all should see for yourself. So listen to the way she words that. The future self I see. She doesn't even have it yet. So she's going on talking about all of these things she's going to accomplish and how she wants to make generational wealth. In what world are you to claim that this opportunity can get you there where you don't even have it to begin with? Not to mention, even the uplines and uplines above you don't even have that. We've literally actually, beautiful example of this, oh my God. So I literally actually had a video that was talking about top leader of iGenius by the name of Afnan Khalifa. And we dove into her talking about how she has been really milking the selling the lifestyle aspect. And she talked about how she makes $90,000 a month. She says that she makes $90,000 a month she says she's an investor and a marketer, mainly multi-level marketing is what she goes on about. And her rank, as we can see, shows that she only makes maybe $50,000 a month. Now, that's, that's good fucking money. All I'm saying though is, is that woman's lying. That is completely lying. And also not to mention, even if you were maybe making $90,000 a month, not including taxes and whatnot, is that enough to truly buy you the fucking plane or do this? No. Is that gonna make generational wealth? Definitely not. So in what world is are you able to say that this is what it can provide and this is exactly what it's gonna do for you when not a single person in that company yet is doing that? They're renting shit. They're buying cheaper items at the designer store so that way they look like they're buying designer shit when they're buying the most cheapest items available. Like this is ridiculous. This makes no fucking sense to me. I just, this is a whole lot of word vomit and it makes me so grossed out because this is an opportunity call. Like people are getting on this and are being told, oh my gosh, watch this, look, this is a great opportunity. And she is not even close to half of these things she's spewing that this company can do. Should be so big and so bright that it scares the shit out of you. My future life is so expensive looking i need to pour my blood sweat and tears into this to make it happen okay my future looks expensive it's going to cost a lot and i'm ready to put in the work and i hope you are too so when this business was presented to me and it's actually funny because my girl did a reading for me she does tarot card readings she's the only person i've ever let do a reading for me in my life because i truly believe that like energy is everything and the person delivering the message if it's not the right person it's not okay so here's the thing I, I want to get this out of the way because I know there's going to be some people commenting like this. I'm not going to judge individuals that have that specific belief in regards to tarot readings, anything like that, psychics, whatever. I personally, I think that shit's cool. Love it. Please don't judge her belief on that. Judge the way she's using that belief to manipulate people. There you go. The right message, right? So she did a reading for me last year, okay? She predicted all of this. She predicted this whole move for me. She said, you're going to make like a big move with like a bunch of boss women. We have men on our team too. Sorry guys, we're here for you too. We're here for you too. But at the time we were just on a, win a women thing, right? But listen, she fully called this out and it's wild now. She had no idea. This is one of my best friends. She had no idea this was in the works. So it just blows my mind that I'm here now because she literally spelled this out, okay? So, hold up. So 
her friend that did a tarot prediction or a psychic reading, again, I don't know technical terms on this, a reading on her said that she was going to make a big move with boss women. But she just said that she has been in network marketing and doing all these things for several years now. So what was the big move? Like genuinely, did you just transfer companies? Is that what we're getting at? Like you're doing the same shit. You're just selling a different scam. Like that makes no sense to me. How I, She's still trying to use anything that she can to make you think of, see, somebody else even predicted this for me and I am making really good money and I'm making boss moves and you came with this company too. Like, oh dear God. But basically what she said is in order to get there, I need to focus and put in the work. And she has no idea. Like. Now I'm here, we're here, WFAB and I genius, and like, it is wild, friends. One more thing I need to mention. Again, no judgment on her friend whatsoever. That work is important and that is valuable. And if you have that belief, fabulous. All I'm saying is that is a generic statement you can make for anyone with goals. Oh, you need to put in the effort and work hard. Yeah, okay, I could say that about myself and work towards this goal. Or somebody could say that about themselves, about their job and hit a new promotion next year. That's very generic, anyone can do that. That, that, that is not proving anything to me. And that is another issue that I have with this call. It, so far, we are almost 15 minutes into this call and I don't see an ounce of numbers, facts, nothing. This is just inspirational bullshit. And by the way, uh, some form of degrading. So imagine sitting here trying to learn about this company. This is the first 15 minutes that you're getting. This is pretty shitty for a business opportunity call. Like you should be jumping in and talking about the facts. This sucks. So, I mean, this brings me to my next point, okay? And I don't know if any of you, if any of you guys know this, but nearly half of North Americans say their expenses are equal to or greater than their income. That means that almost 50% of the world over here they're living beyond their means. They're spending more than they're making. A recipe for disaster, okay? I'm sure the majority of us on this call are living that reality right now. And that's why you're here, friend. Mm, there it is, there it is. Preying on people that are financially unsta unstable. There it fucking is. So yeah, that number I have heard, I probably am gonna have to fact check that one, but I have heard um, that that number is correct from what I remember. A lot of people are struggling financially in this country and it's horrible. And again, I do feel like there's a lot of factors in regard to people not getting paid their worth. Lots of things involved and it's really fucking sad. Also the cost of living, it's ridiculous, it just is. It's very, very hard for a lot of people and I do feel for that because I can't imagine. I have been in that position before by myself because of the pandemic, but continuously living that, I like, I can't imagine and I feel so bad for people who experience that. This is literally so fucking disgusting. Vocally saying that, oh, I know that a lot of you on this call are going through that and that is why you're here. That is fucked because if this woman has such a major involvement with this company and iGenius, she knows damn well the requirements it's going to take in order to be in that company and stay active. And every single person that she has that joins under her, for example, and then is continuously paying every single month, that is going to highly benefit her, but be draining the pockets of people. So I'm sorry, what in the fuck are you doing literally asking people to who already allegedly, as you are saying right now, spending more than what they are earning because they are struggling financially what the fuck are you doing promoting a concept that requires them to spend $220,000 a month possibly? Or upfront, because that's the thing is you have to have an upfront cost. You have to spend, I think, $100 to $2,000 for the upfront cost, and that's not including monthly. And okay, sorry, correction. I now just remember, I'll have it all pop up over here. It's, I think, uh, around like 100 and something to maybe the highest, like 179 every month. That's still a lot of money. That could be groceries for somebody. That could be gas for a family. But you're that comfortable promoting, oh, feel have this wealthy mentality. You need to find something and work for something more. But you vocally say the people that are on this call are the ones that are so fucking desperate right now. And you are preying on that desperation. And I'm sorry, but individuals like her, from what I've looked at, she knows damn well what she's doing. She's the one that has to pay monthly fees also. She fucking knows what's required. But she's promoting this disgusting want to change okay and this so three quarters of americans live paycheck to paycheck why because the system is flawed and we were never taught what to do with our money period okay so joining this business really made me realize that it's not just about how much money you make and more so about how much money you can keep and compound 
And that, my friends. Mm, okay, I I don't like that saying. It's almost similar to when people say, oh, you have the same 24 hours in a day as Beyonce. Beyonce has assistants, nannies, you name it. She can get shit done more, like faster and more efficiently than somebody who is a mom, a single mom of three. I don't like how it's, oh, it's not how much money you have, it's how you can compound it. Somebody who has a decent amount of money and maybe has a little bit extra can compound, can compound that shit faster than someone who is living paycheck to paycheck. Like this is really still bad advice. I. Oh my God, this is a headache to listen to. And again, still, there's no facts. There's no nothing about this business opportunity. It's just inspirational trash that's being spewed. The true definition of wealth. Now, I bet a lot of you don't know this, but the majority of millionaires, get this, they don't make more than 100K a year. Yes, you heard that right, okay? So some of you probably are like, that doesn't make sense. How can they be millionaires? But they, okay, so that means the bulk of their money came from investing, not their income. Okay. Real wealth is built by duplicating your money. Like I said earlier, money doesn't grow on trees. It grows in the markets. Right. And that's exactly why we're so driven to join forces with this company, because the goal is bigger than just making money. The goal is to create real wealth. That so I have a major problem in regards to when they're talking about having people create major wealth. My personal perspective is, and this is also why I literally do what I do right now. My mentality was if I want people to know information, if I want them to have easy access, if I want them to be able to consume this very important, significant information easily, completely for free, et cetera, how am I gonna do that? YouTube. Because reading documents and fine print is not easy for people and I understand it's hard. Sometimes it takes a lot of fucking time and sometimes you don't like listening to boring ass videos that are just going on about fine print. You want people to have a personality connected to it. You want reaction, you want a form and examples and countless proof compiled in one video that is easy for you to digest all while it's for free. That's also why I did this channel and that's why I wanted to do this topic especially because I wanted people to have access to information easy. My thing is, is if this individual is so financially set and she knows what she's doing, she knows how to invest, why isn't she not doing a YouTube channel or something? Because I see so many individuals that have YouTube channels that are talking about how to invest, how to invest into cryptocurrency like they're doing, how to properly do stocks and bonds, all that. And again, I don't fully know all that stuff. I really, I'm not well versed in it. All I'm saying is she was so, so significantly stuck on teaching people financial literacy and making it accessible, she would do it right. Because if this is highly needed, if this is highly valued information, and if everyone is quote unquote flocking to you to learn it, as they claim people are flocking to the WFAP team, it wouldn't be hard to build a platform for YouTube at all. Now, mind you, they sure fucking can try, but if they do, they're literally gonna be providing me a easy amounts of content, let me just tell you that. But all I'm saying is, if that was her real goal and intention, she would have found a better way of doing it. But instead, she's going about an unethical way where it's more convenient for her to make shit up and recruit people and have people pay monthly fees underneath her. This just screams slimy. And again, still on the topic of, oh, you need to build wealth, you need to build wealth. Well, millionaires, they only make a certain amount this year, but everyone else is invest like is investing. Okay, but think about it. How did they get to becoming a millionaire? They maybe had to start off with, sure, maybe making around 100K a year let's say. That's a lot more than what most people are making. They had to get money from somewhere to invest, to then invest further and make more. This is still a shitty argument. Like, this has nothing to do with the average amount of people that are literally hopping on this call trying to learn. And again, what the fuck are we doing ranting about millionaires? What does this have to do with people that are on this call? That long money type of wealth, that old oil tycoon type of wealth, that good old Saudi Arabian long money type of wealth. In what fucking world, please tell me, in what fucking world does an MLM provide oil money? Anything remotely, what? Do you not know what oil money is? Like, do, and I'm talking about like, like this because like, if you're gonna talk about it like that, you should know. Google it. Like she needs to Google it is what I'm saying. Because why are you saying that this can, this industry in general can bring that for you? I just, oh my God, this is so bad. This is what the W5 girls are up to now. This shit. That's what we're here for. So with that being said, friends, I would like to pass the mic off to my good friend. 16 minutes and 44 seconds later, we're finally getting into something else. God. My good friend, my forever hype girl, the one that got me into this business, the beautiful Miss Daniela Marie. Amazing. Hello, hello, guys. Oh my goodness, Alicia, I love hearing your story. 
honestly, it's such an inspiration to see where you came from and how big of the move that you're doing here. And you're such, you are, you're such a boss, Alicia, Alicia Armstrong, like that, that is a strong name, you know? So your personality is bold. Your personality is out there. And I love that because it goes to show. And, and once I tell you guys a little bit about myself too, it goes to show that it doesn't really matter where you come from or who you are or the type of personality that you have, that you can see success. There is no one size fit. Correction. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter. Honestly, anything. As long as you're a warm body that has any sort of money to put into an MLM, they'll fucking take you. It doesn't matter. And honestly, that entire industry as a whole. MLMs are not set up to pick certain qualified people. They don't give a shit. As long as they can get money off of you, great, sign up. Literally, that's all that matters. It's all. There is no model that you need to fit into. There is no type of personality that you need to have because get this, as bold as Alicia is, I'm very quiet. And I'm very, you know, more, more on the reserve side, more chill, more like calm and collected. But guess what? We've both seen massive success in this industry. So it really just goes to show that being authentically yourself is exactly what's going to get you there as long as you have the right mindset. All right. So thank you so much. But before I get into it so that you guys can get to little, like get to know me a little bit as well. Um, my name is Daniela Marie. I am 30 years old. I'm born and raised in Toronto, Canada. Um, you know, okay. So I know we've actually talked about Daniela before in the WFAB videos. I am not going to lie. I had no idea she was 30. I thought she was at least 25. She looks fucking good. I mean, she's a scammer, but she still looks good. My heart is definitely not here. My heart is in traveling all over the world, but this is the place I call home for now. Um, but you know, long, long, maybe 10 years ago, I want to backtrack to kind of paint you guys a vision. Um, I was in the waitressing industry and I was a waitress for about, yeah, nine, 10 years. And, and I was so lost type of type of one in the chat. If you guys have ever felt that lost, like type of one, if you didn't know the direction of life that you wanted to go into, you didn't know like what your next move is, or, or you were stuck in a job, but you wanted a career, but you did not know how to get out of it. And you didn't know how to take that first step. Right. I see a lot of ones and, and, and I hope that you guys can relate to my story, but you know, it got, to, it got to a point where I was, I think 24 and I was like, I can't do this forever. Like, yes. Okay. Wait, you're saying I'm bartending. The money is good. It's a fun environment, but like, I can't do that when I'm 60. I can't do that when I'm 50. I need to be able to support myself in a healthy way and, and secure myself. Right. And I needed a career, but I had no idea what to do. You know, I always had that entrepreneur bone in my body. I always knew that I never wanted to work for anybody else. And I think it's because I've worked for other people for so long and other companies and always on their time schedule and always doing what they wanted me to do. And I never really had that like freedom, right? I never really had a, a lack of money because I was always working like, you know, two or three jobs at a time, but I didn't have the lack of freedom to decide when I wanted to go, if I didn't want to go in, if I wanted to, you know, pick up and travel for a month or if I wanted to just stay home because I wasn't feeling good. I was always on somebody else's clock. And personally, I don't like that. I don't love it. That's something about my life that I dreaded, the fact that I was on. Okay, so I actually have not personally heard this experience from her in regards to being a, wait a waitress for this long because she ran with the story of, I was a lash tech that owned my own business and then I was overworked by her own choice because she booked too many fucking people and then she found Monet and her life changed. Now all of a sudden we're talking about being a waitress. Why is the story switching? And shit, she might mention the last check situation, but why? She's switching the story on purpose, I feel like, because she wants people to relate to her of, I felt lost, I felt lost. And that's something that really has been irking me. And actually, I've had a recent increase of people that are in like a younger demographic, especially, but just people in general that have been messaging me saying, I feel really lost and that's why I joined this company or I feel really lost and that's why someone was trying to recruit me because I'm a brand new out of high school or fresh out of college student and I don't know what to do. And that just breaks my heart because I, I'm going to be honest with you, I personally have never experienced that because I'm a very fortunate individual. I knew exactly what I wanted to do from the get-go, but some people don't know. And that's perfectly okay. I just want to let you guys know that. Please, please, please don't join an MLM. Literally do anything else besides this shit because this is absolutely horrible. But anyways, let's see if she actually mentions the rest of her story or if she sticks with the waitressing thing to degrade the industry and act like she could never get anywhere because of it. On somebody else's time. And I wanted to design my own, right? I, I just wanted to design my own life and create my own my own little vision of, of where I wanted to be. So my very first step into entrepreneurship, guys, I was a lash extension artist and I got into the industry while I was in the waitressing industry and I built up my business to a point where I was doing both, right? And it got to the point where I, I was so successful with my lash extension business, which I started in my mom's garage, by the way, um, you know, and, and I quit and I left my waitressing industry business. I left there and I was doing lashes full time and it was amazing. And I was so grateful and so happy, but I also realized that, you know, 
I was, yeah, I was my own boss and I was making my own schedule, but I only had two hands. Right. And I was working 12 hour days, six days a week. And I thought to myself, going to be honest with you here, this might be some tough love, but when you have to expand your company, you hit a point and a fork in the road where you can't do everything. So what do you do? You hire an additional individual, a part of your business and make that transfer. In order to grow, you have to do that. Every company had to do that. They started with a couple, then it grew with maybe like 20 and then it like, it just kept manifesting and growing to more people because they couldn't keep up. And there is nothing wrong with that. However, whose fault was that? Like genuinely speaking, if you decided to make that decision of I'm not taking anyone else on, that is a personal decision that you made. You could, and again, I'm not saying it's an easy transition. I, it is not an easy transition whatsoever. But I am saying, if you don't make that decision, it is gonna be a very hard situation. But also my thing is, and this is just what I've personally heard, again, other people who have maybe had these experiences or have their own businesses, for example, you prob you could easily share your guys' other experiences. But from what I've heard is some people who are in very high demand, what they do is they hike up their prices a little bit more because they are in such high demand and they take on less clients. And then the people that are gonna be paying more are going to be coming and they have more control. For example, I mean, there's literally places and um, hair salons in Los Angeles, for example, that are so expensive, but they're in such high demand because they're, again, to me, this is fucking stupid, but they're influencer-based hairstylists that give you such a like luxurious experience. So they jacked up the prices big time so that way, only the people that would spend the money would go. So they would make the same exact amount except for they weren't working as many hours. I've heard many people do this and honestly, that's probably what I would think that she probably could have done if she didn't want to hire someone else on. She had options is what I'm saying. But again, we are running with the concept of it wasn't good enough, I had no control. I got that, no, no, stop that. If anything, being a lash tech is 10 times more valuable work for sure than an MLM because you're actually providing a valuable service and not recruiting people to being lash techs and that's the only way you make money. I thought to myself that the more I work, the more hours I put in, the more time I spend working, the richer the richer I will get. The the more um, you know, the more success that I'll see, the the easier it will be for me to save money and then I'll and then I'll have it all figured out. Right? But just like Alicia said, like money doesn't grow on trees right? It grows by investing. Money doesn't just, you know, trading time for money is, is one way of making an income. There's eight different ways of making incomes. There's residual income, there's property income, there's so many different avenues. And the average millionaire has several streams of income. So I really started thinking to myself, like, what other income stream can I do? So I started looking at online businesses. And that's when I got into the online world. And that's when I started, you know, I was making money from lashes, plus I was making money from another source. Life is great. And then the pandemic hit me. And my business of six years of lashes, I needed to close and shut down. And that, that major stream of income where I paid my bills, I paid my rent, I paid my cell phone, my groceries, X, Y, and Z was gone. Right. Did any of you guys experience some trauma from, you know, this, this lockdown? Did anybody lose your jobs? Type a two in the chat. Cause I, I lost my business of six years and it was the toughest thing that I've ever been through. Right. So that's one way it was harsh, but another way it was a blessing because it led me to this industry. All right. It led me to the online world. And I don't know if you guys know if you guys have been paying attention, but the online world is booming, booming traditional businesses that are closed. And a lot of them, they're, they're going into online routes. Look at restaurants. It's unfortunate that we can't go and sit in a restaurant where, where we are. Everything's in lockdown again. You know, but guess what? They, they're being resourceful. So what are they using? They're doing takeout. They're doing their services through Uber. They're doing their services through online companies, which, you know, is generating convenience and making an income. Right. So if you're on this call right now looking for some sort of a stream of online income, you're in the right place because that's where the world is headed, guys. It's literally where the world is headed. So I'm going to kind of piggyback off of what Alicia said and, and kind of give you guys a little bit of a solution. OK, and the solution is. Okay. So, again, we are on minute 23. I'd like to mention still no facts about the business, still no talk about the business. Nothing. This is just word vomit. No, love that for us. Um, Two. I, again, love how we were talking about trauma from the pandemic because people have experienced that on top of, oh, did you lose your job? Did you lose your job? Now everything's going online. Now you should join us. So it makes no sense to me. Like, again, I am an individual that was one of those that did lose her job during the pandemic and that fucking sucked. That was terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. I still freak out a little bit over that experience. And MLM is not the way to go. And again, 
Notice how all of these are preying on traumatic or really vulnerable experiences to get you interested. Now, again, I will also state as well, she was right about the fact that a lot of things are getting transferred online, like digitally or on the internet. She's absolutely correct about that. That is. However, there are many things online that are predatory and unethical. That just because it's transferring online doesn't mean it's good or better. That means you need to be cautious of the new things that are on the internet. I genius. One of the solutions is iGenius. And, and iGenius started, which is the company that we're in, it started with four co-founders from Wall Street. And what everyone does in this, in this business, they, we teach people how to make, manage, and save more money. Okay? That's the platform. We use opportunities. We use information. We use tools, education through a subscription-based model. All right? Something that I really liked is that it's a publicly traded company. Okay? And the publicly traded company calls InvestView. All right? Which means that everything is in full transparency. Okay, InvestView, InvestView is also regulated. I'm sorry, but I call complete bullshit. Just because a company is publicly traded does not mean at all that everything is just ethical and dandy. We have countless times where there are many corporate companies that are publicly traded, but then got into lawsuits and issues because they were being fucking terrible to their employees. So still doesn't mean anything to me. InvestView is also regulated by the SEC, which is the highest form to be regulated by the SEC, Security Exchange Commission. Okay, you can see absolutely everything on the US government website. We have, iGenius has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. I don't know if you guys have ever looked on the Better Business Bureau, but- Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. So you're going to tell me that this company who I'm going to, in my opinion, allegedly um, decided to change their name, change some of their stuff in regards to business because they got into some legal trouble. Literally, they had to change everything because they were doing some not so great shit. So again, in what way is this ethical or something that I should trust? And honestly, if you check a lot of that stuff, some of the shit that she's actually sharing about this company is completely not true at all. And if you look at the actual reviews of this company, they're not looking too hot at all. And also, what I would like to remind you, as she's speaking about this, wouldn't you think that just like I do in my videos, she would be popping up screenshots. She would be sharing her screen, showing the documents and proof of everything that she's saying. Isn't that funny how she's not showing proof and she's just spewing bullshit? Yeah, that, that's real fun. Business Bureau, but you know, that's, that's a huge rating to have an A plus on there, okay? So with that being said, our job and, and our job today is really just to give you all the information that you need to help you guys make a decision for your life to see if this is something that you can you know, where you want to go with it and where you want to head with your life. Okay. And at the, by the end of this call, guys, like if you have all the information, if it makes sense for you, then we can definitely help you change your life financially. Okay. So aside from that, we also have a movement that's attached to it. I don't want to help you with the box. There you go. Um, aside from that, guys, we also have a group that really, um, hold on guys, if there's any negativity in the chat, let's just drown it out. <laughs> So I like to highlight that apparently somebody was like calling out some bullshit in the chat of the Zoom call. And again, their natural response is, oh, let's block off the chat. And oh, if there's negativity, drown it out. So when they say drown it out, they start putting a shit ton of anything, numbers, letters, so that way you can't scroll up to see what somebody said. So gatekeeping information essentially from people who could be seeing a contradictory opinion. Also, I wanted to stop this here real quickly because I think it is pretty good to read off the Better Business Bureau over, overview of ratings. So the BBB ratings represent the BBB's opinions of how the business is likely to interact with its customers. The BBB rating is based on information BBB is able to obtain about the business, including complaints received from the public. BBB seeks and uses information directly from businesses and from public data sources. Here's the thing that I'd like to mention. Interact with its customers. Who are the customers of this company? Take, yeah, take a wild guess. It's the fucking promoters. Not a lot of people from what I've personally seen, again, I can double check this, but most people in MLMs are the actual customers, the main money source of these. So of course, the people that are in a alleged scheme would think this is a fabulous company. You're just saying, this is not like some fucking Amazon review for crying out loud. Ooh, one other thing I really wanna add. Um, it says the BBB ratings are not a guarantee of businesses reliability or performance. BBB recommends that customers consider a business's BBB rating in addition to all other available information about the business. So sure, I'll consider that you have an A plus rating, but look at all the other statistics about MLMs and your company and the scammy slimy shit that your promoters like to per se. I think that outweighs the fucking A plus rating that you guys have, but good job. When, when it comes to our community guys, and I know that Alicia mentioned it a little bit, it's something called WFAB, which stands for work from anywhere boss builders, okay? WFAB is basically a movement that, 
a, basically a movement that um, really brings people together. It helps people in a sense of community. It helps people in a sense of security to really just bring people together from all different walks of life. It doesn't matter if you are, you know. That's not what I've heard. I've dealt with a lot of people who were formerly a part of WFAB. And what did I hear? It was nothing but mean girls. Also, again, refer to my video of the WFAB downfall and actually a video that I did in collaboration with Deanna. We literally dove into this individual and several others that were talking about how they hid the transfer of their team that they were trying to make, which by the way was literally violating policies and procedures of, their, of both companies. They were literally trying to transfer Monet, their team from Monet to iGenius. They hid it until last minute when they were already transferred and good to go. And they were rude about it when people were pissy. So I'm just saying their, their response to their downlines is absolutely fucking horrific. So no, this is not a, we are a family. They literally do not give a shit about you at all unless you are providing the money. Uh, if, you, if you're a different color, it doesn't matter if you're a different age, it doesn't matter where you come from. The whole point of this community of WFAB is to bring people together in a safe environment that strictly focuses on collaboration versus competition. So I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of competition out there. Right? A lot of people are constantly competing with each other and thinking that I, man, I can't stand it when these people say this is about collaboration over competition when they literally will host specific events for people with specific ranks. And unless you are making that specific rank or kissing the right person's ass, they do not care at all. I've seen it myself. I've seen the proof. I've seen the screenshots. I have talked to the people who've experienced this. It has gotten to a point in this WFAB team, from my opinion, what I'm analyzing on this, that they will do anything that it takes and they will lie to anyone that they need to lie to and they will take advantage of anyone that they need to in order to keep their quote unquote entrepreneurial status, which by the way is complete bullshit. They're not an entrepreneur by any means. They will take any length that they need to keep up what they quote unquote created and it's vile. This this is one of the worst teams, in my opinion, that I've seen in regards to any MLM, but it's just progressively worse how we keep seeing this stuff fall apart and fucking people over. Like, I just, oh my God. That's the way to go about things. But guess what? If you want to go fast, you go alone. You want to go far, you go together, right? So that's what we have done with this community. It, it brings that sense of comfort. It brings that sense of everybody striving for that same vision and that same goal together to help build wealth, to help build residual income, and to move towards where the future is headed, right? And one of the biggest places that the future is headed, guys, is crypto, okay? Crypto is huge. It's in every single conversation, like 90% of the conversations that I come across that I'm into, crypto always gets brought off. And you know that you're missing out if you're not already learning about it or if you're not already getting involved. Like, you know that deep down, right? So, all in all, we're here to help you make, manage, and save money. Now, I want to talk about something that to bring to your attention, okay? And as a kid, I put the, I put the chat on you, but, you know, you can raise your hand in the camera if, if this resonates with you. As a kid, you know, my parents told me to open up a savings account, right? And I started to build money and put it away for my future. But the one thing that I can tell you, and the one thing that's a fact, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? But the one thing that's a fact is that if you're keeping your money in the bank, you're actually losing money. And I want to show you a few different reasons why, Okay. So, so we are actually going to be pausing this here right now because I'm going to actually cut this off and make this into a part two because this is a very, very long video. I know not a lot of people are not able to like take in a really long video like this at one time. So tomorrow I'm actually going to be having the second part up live and ready to go. We are going to stop this right here. So thank you guys so much for watching so far and I will catch you in the next part. Let's go.